Brett Pontecorvo here at Mainstage to Ableton.com. Today we're going to take a look at how to set up your MIDI preferences in Ableton Live to make them work for you so they're doing exactly what you want them to do and nothing else. Let's jump in. All right, so there are three parameters that Live uses to separate incoming MIDI information. The first is track, and that's used for playing and recording notes and CC parameters. So if you're playing a keyboard or, or any type of a MIDI instrument and using knobs and faders to control those sounds, Live is going to see it, process it, and record it if track is turned on. Sync is used for linking time. So if you're using a beat machine or you're using uh, a keyboard that has a built-in arpeggiator, you're going to need that. And remote is used um, to be able to map your knobs and your faders um, to different parameters inside Live. So if those things are turned off, um, that functionality is not going to work. And it's also important to note that all of these preferences have both an input and an output. So input meaning your hardware is controlling Ableton and output meaning Ableton is controlling your hardware. So here are my settings and why I use them. I use two main controllers. The first is the Keylab 88 and this is what I use to play notes and I also use it to control certain MIDI effects when I'm playing live. Um, so my MIDI setup looks like this. For input I have my tracking turned on and I have my remote turned on. So that means Ableton is going to see my keys that I'm playing, and it's also going to allow me to map MIDI information coming from my keyboard to the screen. The second thing that I use is my Launch Control XL, and that's what I really use for processing sound and um, navigating volumes and everything if I'm playing live. For the Launch Control, since I'm not actually playing notes, um, I literally just have my input remote turned on and my output remote turned on, um, since it is only used to map parameters. So here are some general settings that will work. So for a keyboard, um, step one, plug your keyboard into your computer. And now you're going to do that either via USB MIDI or via a MIDI cable to an interface or converter. So step two, navigate over to preferences and you'll want to click on the link MIDI tab. Um, and for the input column by your keyboard, you need to make sure that track is turned on and remote is turned on. If your keyboard has an LED feedback section, maybe it has some pads or it has some clip firing capability, then make sure that for output, you also turn remote on. And if it doesn't have that, you can leave that off. Now, if your keyboard has a built-in arpeggiator that you would like to use, you also need to make sure under the output column, sync is turned on. And then you should be all set to go. And here are some general controller settings. So you need to plug it in either via your USB MIDI or via an actual MIDI cable to a converter. And then you'll need to navigate to preferences the same way you did for your keyboard. And all you need to do is turn remote on for both the input and the output because a controller is generally not gonna be sending tempo information. And there are some exceptions to that, but this is a general rule that will work for most controllers. Your first option is you want to sync your drum machine to Ableton's clock. If that's the case, you want to navigate to your drum machine's output in the preferences and turn sync on. Your second option is to sync Ableton's clock to your drum machine. And if that's the case, you want to turn your input sync on. All right, guys, that is the way to set everything up. You should be rocking and rolling now. Now, if you're looking to set up a patch list inside Ableton Live, head over to the website at mainstagetoableton.com forward slash go and get your free copy of the Fast Track Patch List Guide. And if you have any other questions or you want to get in touch with me, I would love to hear from you. You can either do that at our Facebook group, which is in the comments below, or through the Contact Us page on the website. I hope to see you guys all there.